were you were you confident in 2017 that you were never going to go back to prison? How did that work out for you? I only lasted two and a half months. Whew. I got out May 17. I caught another case August 6. Okay, now when you got out, was your mentality like, I I'm not messing around. Um, I got my wife. Yeah. Uh, my family's here. As, as soon as I got out that same day, they had, at my mom's pad, it was like a whole gangster party. Shout out to homie G. He was in the middle of the street hopping at 6'4. It was a straight gangster party. And I just remember the homies were right there. And, you know, um, I want to shout out my boy Sickle. Rest in peace, my boy Agustin Jorge, man. But uh, that was my dog. And he got taken away from me while I was busted. So I just remember talking to the homies and. Shout out my homeboy Speedy, man. I just remember the homie Speedy pulled me aside and he gave me a hug and he was like, hey bro, like, just chill, you know what I mean? Like, do your family thing, homie, do your life. Like, worry about yourself, you know what I mean? Like, you already did what you did, homie. Like, much love, much respect, but do what you gotta do to progress in life, you know what I'm saying? And I just remember telling him like, nah, like they took my dog, whoa, whoa. And he just, Pretty much he got to me, you know, he, he he talked to me and he got to me that day, you know, and because of him, I was honestly like trying to do good. I, I was working, everything like everything that happened that day that I got busted was just over me being nice and giving homeboy a ride because the homie I was with, he wasn't even from the hood. Like I ended up catching a case for somebody from another hood. You know what I mean? The homies were even mad at me like, like, damn, like, you know. We told you to chill, you know what I mean? So um, briefly talk about uh, what happened two months later that caused For you sure. going back. So I was living in with my wife in an apartment complex and I ended up meeting the homie kid from Venice right there. And we'll just blaze. I'll come out of work and I'll just blaze with him. So I'm chilling. It's Sunday. We're about to go to the movies. My wife just got home from work. She's jumping in the shower, getting ready. He calls me like, hey, do me a favor. Like, give me a ride to Venice. I need to go pick up some money. This was like around the, well, August. You know what I mean? August is like, September is back to school. You know what I mean? So he's like, hey, I need to go pick up some money to go buy some school supplies for his girl's kids, the girl that he was living there with. So once he said the kids, he got me, you know? So I gave him a ride. We go to we go to Venice. We're we're coming back on um, Venice and Sepulveda. I'm going down Venice. I make a ride on Sepulveda. Well, actually, I'm waiting at the light. Sepulveda, the cops coming down Sepulveda. I'm waiting. He keeps going. As soon as I turn, he busts a bitch, then busts another bitch and gets behind me. As soon as he gets behind me, I'm pulling over because he already blurted me. As soon as I'm pulling over, homeboy starts literally almost crying in my passenger seat like, nah, bro, I'm on the run for a murder case, this, this, and that. And he's like, and I picked up this burner. Like, what? As soon as he said that, not even the burner, just him saying that he was running for a murder case. It just, I, I'm fresh out. In there, rule number one is you don't leave a homie unstuck. Anytime a homie needs help or anything, you don't leave a homie unstuck. So what do I do? Er, I gas it. End up hitting a couple corners. I'm trying to lose them. I'm trying to tell homeboy to run. I'm on a high control GPS. Like, where do I think I'm going? I'm not going nowhere. I have a GPS on my ankle, you know what I mean? So I'm going, trying to hit a couple corners. I end up breaking. I end up breaking and end up getting busted. The crazy part, right? The crazy part about it, that's why y'all need to watch out who you guys look out for. Homeboy wasn't even on the run for a murder case. He was on the run for beating up his baby mama. That's what he was on the run for. So I ended up wrecking my car, catching a new case, two months fresh out of doing 10 years for somebody that was trying to run, couldn't man up to going and fighting a domestic violence case. He only did 90 days fucking um, violation. He got a 90 day violation. I got a whole new case and I wrecked my car.
I had a 2006 black on black charger, like clean, clean too. I only had it a week. I got it on Sunday. I wrecked it the following Sunday. And um, how much time did you end up having to take on that new brand new case? I ended up taking a deal for 32 months with 80. They gave me 32 months with 80%. So they pretty much gave me, cause it's 16 months. If you look up the case, it's 16 months, but they doubled me up. So I ended up doing like 22 months. So if I do my math correct, you, you get out in early 2020? Yep, February 2020. Man, so you lost almost, uh, almost two, two and a half, almost three more years. Yeah, huh? yep. my daughter was already two when I came out. She was about to turn two. No, no, yep. she was already two. So did you have a little bit of animosity with the homie from Venice? Because Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Don't ever let me catch you, my G. I oh. need that. Okay, so yeah, I was <laughs> going to ask, um, what's the conversation been with him since you've... Uh, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him. Yep. Yeah, he don't. He he didn't live right there no more. You know what I mean? And I I moved since then and stuff like that. Do you but yeah, think I haven't you seen still, him. You still want that, even though yeah, that nah. might end up giving you another year. Yeah, or two nah, years. I'm over <laughs> it. I'm over it. I'm just yeah. messing with y'all. You know, it's just little heat of the moment. You yeah. know what I mean? Nah, it's just what is your you know, wife it comes said, with it. What was your wife's reaction? Cause you just came home after all that time, and then you're going right back for almost three more years. That's why I got married. To be honest, that's why I got married. I got married inside prison. I got married inside prison, so that way we could have conjugals and all that. You know and you're me? still with the same woman? Yeah. That's pretty rare, or is it yeah. common, you think? Because I know a lot of guys marry just so they can have that, that hookup. Yeah. But when they come home and they're free, they, they, they move on. Yeah, I think it depends, you know? Yeah. It depends on the individual. Like, I've always been, like, a real loyal and real, you know? Like, that's just me. Like, if somebody looks out for me and stuff like that, like, I, I'm a right with you. If you show me some type of love and that you got me, I got you full-fledged, you know what I mean? That's so why I'm still here to this day, you know? So your wife was with you before you got out on your first case? Yep. She did the last three years with me. And then she's got to deal with this new case. She yep. must have been frustrated. Oh, huh? yeah. Yeah, she was. And she, she ended up, she bailed me out and everything, you know what I mean? Like, I ended up, <clears throat> I was busted for like four days, and then my PO lifted the hold, so she bailed me out, and I fought it from the streets. I turned myself in on um, April 2nd of 2018 and I got out February like 12 of 2020 and when you when you went in what kind of yard did the yards change did yeah you... I believe sure I was scared you know what I mean because right before I got out that's when they were doing all that 50 50 stuff you know what I mean now I'm pretty sure I think all level twos are, are pretty much like that you know what I mean I just remember right there they would just say like, look, right now this is our yard. Cause there was already yards right there in that prison that were already bad. It was only two good solid yards. It was E and F. So we was just like, if any bus comes, they bring anybody of them right there, it's on site. You know what I mean? As soon as they step foot right there, it's on site. It don't matter who's there, what, what you gotta do. You know what I mean? It's on site. Now, a lot of these guys that are on these 50-50 yards, they start their own gangs. Did you ever have to bump into any of these guys from these these uh, PC gangs, such as the, I guess the two fibers are the biggest of all the PC gangs. Are there any times where, you, where you're actually clashing or get an opportunity to be face-to-face -face with some of these guys? Mm, everywhere I've been at, it, it hasn't been like that. The only place I can say that we've ever like crossed paths was in Chino. In Chino, like we'll be going out to yard and then they'll have them like in like the cages for medical or something like that. And they'll try to wolf and stuff like that. But the homies like, that's one thing. You can't let them, you can't let them bait you. Cause if they're yelling at you and you let them get to you and you start yelling back, you in trouble. Cause we, we, we don't even acknowledge them. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they not even there. Like, Cause it's almost treating them as an equal. Yeah. Right? Unless them doors are cracked and you could fight, then yeah, fly them. But as far as going back and forth like that, nah, you get you get beat up for something like that, you know? 